I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is a PayPal request and a bit of a different PayPal request. But I did say that if people are interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, reviews, re-reviews, requests, reactions, topics, movie topics, topics in general, pretty much any type of video, you can request it either directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Both links are down below. I did say it could be pretty much anything. So for Jack, he requested this. I'm like, okay. He sent in a very generous PayPal donation. Thank you so much for that. And I believe this is a show he grew up with when he was younger. I did not. A Bear in the Big Blue House. It is a show mainly for preschoolers, for kids. For what I understand, it debuted in 1997. Now, by that point, I was... Uh, 14 years old 14 15 years old so by that point i was on my way to being centered on action films horror films films like or even your pg-13 films like independence day twister uh, films like air force one films like contact you know films of that nature and also, this was on the Disney Channel, or I should say on a segment of the Disney Channel called Playhouse Disney. I didn't have Disney Channel. Growing up, I had four channels, two of CBS, one of ABC, and one of PBS. And even PBS, I rarely checked out. Once in a blue moon as a little, little kid, maybe a Sesame Street, maybe some Reading Rainbow, maybe some of the game show, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? But not too much. I did even back then. I was more into Bugs Bunny, Looney Tune cartoons, or Ninja Turtles, or like whatever whatever else debuted on ABC or CBS. And even as a kid, I was more into watching Number Elm Street films, Aliens, things of that nature. And if it was kid stuff, it'd be The Three Stooges, which my aunt had taped on VHS tape and had sent it to the family. Or Ernest P. Royal Jim Varney movies, which I have a few of those reviews on the channel. Now, if we understand, back in the day, around this time, Disney Channel was struggling in the ratings. They were struggling against PBS and their block of Sesame Street and so forth. They were struggling mainly from Nickelodeon. Just Nickelodeon would have certain blocks where... Yeah, there'd be some for little kids, but there'd be some for a little bit of an older audience. Or programs that both age groups could enjoy. So then Disney was run. what are we going to do? What should we do? So let's make some blocks of our own. And let's have an early morning block called Playhouse Disney. Which is very early in the morning. That would be for preschoolers, very, very young kids. 
which the show fell in fell into that placement and it went for a couple seasons and then for some reason from the end of 1999 to 2002 really nothing happened it says that well one of the cast members passed away but she passed away in like 2003 so that would not explain why from 99 to 2002 there was nothing and for what I understand it was fairly successful there were parents who enjoyed it with their kids and it was appropriate for kids there was nothing out of the blue for kids to like this is a show that if you're a parent I could see you letting your kids watch because unlike Barney who's hyper and annoying or Teletubbies that were just weird and what the fuck ass to trip this you have a character named Bear who does have a calming presence I thought the Jim Henson's group worked on the show and granted the rest of it for the most part is pretty much hand puppetry but the bear itself not too bad for an early Saturday morning preschooler show where the bear suit was articulate and the fact that its eyes would move up and down and blink and squint and not that bad in articulation of the face it was a full body suit and again with the always had a calming demeanor with mixed in with the expressive face I think really helped the kids I was reading up some info on the show and apparently this is what people much more much more versed in the show and the history of the show than I am because again I had never seen the show before for I understand people who had in particular kids with special needs they enjoyed the show because of the calming demeanor of the main character it pretty much like the title says is a bear in a big blue house and he had other characters you had this cub um, which was a, another bear a child bear a cub you had this mouse which I'll say this mouse needs some fucking volume because at times he got really annoying it's like calm the down man and you need some volume in your diet you had these two purple otters you had this lemur that I swear taught almost like Elmo like if Elmo was even harder to understand and a little bit more childlike that's what this lemur sounded uh, from time to time you have this son named Ray and then at the end of every episode you'd have this moon called Luna now that voice I recognize who and sadly she's the one who passed away in 2003 and apparently they didn't do a lot after that because th their heart wasn't in it because one of their friends passed away but again that doesn't explain why from 99 to 2002 they didn't really do anything so I, I, tr I couldn't find any info as to why that was the case but the voice of the moon she was the DJ and the Warriors you watch Walter Hills the Warriors and you hear the voice and once in a while you see up close of her face or her lips the DJ saying oh the Warriors be careful out there blah blah she was also in a handful of stuff and small roles she was on the game show where in the world's Carmen San Diego she was the judge in anger management that was her last role and you find out she was in connection with Jack Nicholson's character I mean the voice word for a kid show worked fine uh, the shows definitely followed a formula pretty much every episode it started with the welcome song and then we're on the bear and it was a bit weird to watch at first but obviously this isn't meant for me I'm a guy in my 30s and this is a show meant for preschoolers but it's a bit weird at first because the every episode the bear looks and then starts sniffing and says what's that smell hmm that's you and it was always be something complimentary 
oh do you have a baby nearby yeah that fresh baby smell or uh, were you on the lawn recently you smell fresh and and grassy or like what kind of grass are we talking about but that's different oh do you have pajamas on you have you smell like clean pajamas oh do I smell oranges did you have a glass of orange juice today you smell like oranges I'm like what is your f what's the sniffing fetish for smelling fetish so I thought that was a bit weird but I mean okay so pretty much it each episode would start off with the welcome song would start off with that and then you get into the story obviously again it's made for preschoolers so maybe it's some type of story about change not money change but you know how things change uh, one's about taking pictures one's about building stuff one's about inventions one's about oh if you miss your friends how you deal with it one's about potty training which wasn't as cringy as I thought it would be because again I'm trying to be in the mindset of okay this is meant for preschoolers and idea there's really nothing that let me put it another way like I said I think parents would take to the show and be very comfortable with letting their kids watch it and there's like 39 episodes in season two so it'd be very tough to talk about all 39 of them <laughs> but the the first couple you have one's about a baby because the the mouse's grandma leaves a baby there and then them trying to take care of the baby and it's like oh well and each episode has a couple songs and again it's not really for me to review because it's a grown-ass man reviewing a show that's meant for preschoolers but again, just on the flip side, looking at it as a show for preschoolers, I didn't see anything that was controversial, anything that was, uh, oh my God, you should not let your kids see it. It's so out of the blue and it's offensive or any of that sort. I mean, this is a movie where, I mean, this is a show where I was talking about like, one of the songs is how they love babies, how, you know, I love to watch them eat and Oh, another thing with each show is, at least of the season two, you would have the shadow, kind of like the Peter Pan shadow, like a shadow that would talk to the bear and then would always tell, they say a story, but it's more like a little song, like rock a -bye Baby, The Cradle Will Rock. Uh, another song later on would be, oh, what the hell? It was on the tip of my oh where the buffalo roam where the buffalo roam it's all cloudy all day or another one where the bear went over the mountain the bear went over the mountain so it part of me is like this is not a fucking story i mean you keep saying you're telling stories i'm like that wasn't a really much of a fucking story but it's Whenever you should say, ask, you should fucking say whenever I want you want to hear me sing a song, I'll do it because you're singing the song. You're not really telling much of a fucking story, so you're lying, Shadow, playing Shadow games or Shadow play. But I think it's meant for kids. And you know that episode ends with the lemur. He's not sure about the baby, and then gives the baby. A rattle it had when it was a baby and then the baby's happy and then the show means well the show means well to have a heart and each time the show ends with the goodbye song we're like goodbye goodbye we'll see you next time again that's pretty much every episode ends so it's very formulaic which a lot of those shows were whether it be mr rogers neighborhood you know, it would begin and end pretty much the same way each time 
because it was a sense of calmness. It was a sense of being familiar to little kids and preschoolers. And then they get used to, and if they liked it and they get used to it, then it's like a blanket and they're comforted by it. So maybe that's why a lot of these shows didn't want to change too much because you're dealing with preschoolers and kids and they're looking forward to that familiar thing to see again and again. So, like I said, it's a bit hard to review this because you're reviewing something that's meant for preschoolers, but like the Jim Henson, the full bear suit, pre, again, pretty decent, especially face-wise. It's too bad. Like The, the moon, I, I didn't mind the way the moon looked as well as the sun. That was a little bit more articulate than the hand puppets. I just because it's Jim Henson, maybe I was expecting a bit more and some of the puppetry, like the mouse really is pretty much a hand puppet. So maybe with the others, I expected a little bit more intricacies in them as well. But yeah, I'm not gonna be too harsh on it. I mean, other episodes, ones about exploring, it's like the second episode is about exploring and you know, whether you're in the backyard, you're in outer space. And also another thing with each episode is it will cut to actual kids talking about the topic. Like, where do you look to explore? What have they explored? Or before, what do you think about babies? Or later... You know, what do you think about bedtime? So like I said, if I was a formula, the bear, I mentioned before, his smell and fetish, get into the little topic at hand. You have the shadow that tells his story or more a song. The real kids giving their thoughts on the subject, ending with the same goodbye song. Uh, one episode was about bedtime and they tell a story about brushing your teeth. I'm like, kids, t kids don't love brushing their teeth as much as you make it out to be. I mean, I know what you're saying this because it's something that has to be done. It's like, hey, if we enjoy it, maybe the kids will think to enjoy it. And I don't know, maybe be a little bit of telepathy, a little bit of mind control, brainwashing of, but brainwashing a good way because it's something you need to do. But it's like reality kids don't want to fucking brush their teeth but I guess they're like hey if we see how much we love it you need to love it too so you little sons of bitches you little fuckers you little fucking babies fuck you baby you don't fucking brush your teeth and you don't like it Uh, one was about one episode was about nature because the little cub is scared of a bee and the older bear is like, hey, it's okay. Just don't get near the bee. Don't fuck with the bee. Don't spit at the bee. Don't piss on the bee. Don't do anything with the bee. Don't do any of that. Just leave it alone. It'll leave you alone. And hey, bees do stuff too. Like they do stuff with pollen. And then look, lo and behold, they give us honey or they help us give us honey. I did once in a while because you take into consideration that it is a kid show. Like in that episode, they talk about a spider's web. They say the reason a spider makes a web is because of art. I'm like, well, that's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, that's a fucking lie. No, the reason they make a web is so that buds get caught and they can eat it. Mainly when the buds are still alive. But, you know, how you don't tell that to a kid? <laughs> That's the thing with back in the day is that shows did want to try to maintain the innocence of a kid and that to bring those heavier issues when they're able to handle it, when they're able to handle it in their brains and their hearts and their minds and to not mess them up prematurely. Sally, maybe that's the thing that happens nowadays is that a fucking parent will just give a kid a computer and a cell phone and then leave them alone and then at least them having fucking rainbow parties and all this other horse shit because parents don't want to be parents because they're lazy assholes they, they didn't learn to pull out or use a fucking hood ornament on their dick 
and it's like nothing will happen and then you have a kid it's like oh I don't want to do anything here kid here's a computer here's a phone do whatever the fuck you want I'm going to go off and drink a beer and watch a football game or I'm going to go out with my lady rock set I'm going to go out to a club and I'm going to get drawn till 3 in the morning And like I said, it goes on from there. Now, like I said, there are about 39 episodes, quite a bit for one season. Each episode is about 20-some minutes apiece. Pretty much it was like 97, 98, 99. And then nothing until like 2002. Then they had another season... And I guess after that, they're like, no, nah, we don't need to do any more because we got over 100 episodes. When you get to 100 episodes, then you can be put into syndication because I guess they figure, well, if you get to 100 episodes, that's enough material to repeat, whether it's three, four, five days a week, seven days, however long. Syndication means you don't get money for running those syndication, those profits. Maybe they assume, hey, these kids have a short-term memory or short-term time remembering stuff. Let's give them something new. Of course, I'm thinking, well, how do you explain Sesame Street? That's been on for quite a while, and it seems like kids are still into Sesame Street. But, hey, what do I know? It's Disney. Do you think Disney does smart shit? No. But, I mean, for what it was, you know, I'm watching. I'm going, obviously, this is not meant for me. I'm not three, four years old. This is not the stuff I usually watch. I did not grow up with this, so I don't have nostalgia on it. But I can see people as a little kid enjoying it because walking, talking animals, a calm, well-voiced bear that is has a demeanor that's not threatening in the slightest messages that are positive and mean well there's nothing that creepy or weird like i say even the one episode about potty training you're like oh god you know of course but even that's handled responsibly for the topic and again the idea there was nothing really that Cringeworthy. I mean, the fact that you're a grown man watching the show, sure, there's stuff you could say is cringe, but at the same time, for what it is, if I had a kid, I'd rather why I haven't watched this than the annoying as fuck Barney the fucking dinosaur. Teletubbies probably steer the shit out of kids more than they watch them. Nowadays, I don't even know what the hell kids watch nowadays. Well, the internet. What am I talking about? They watch the internet. They watch YouTube. Was this one of the problems? Don't give a kid a fucking computer until like, I I would say honestly, don't have a, don't let a kid have a computer or a cell phone until they're 16, 17. I really do mean that. I really do mean that. I think a kid should not have a cell phone or a computer until they're 16, 17 years old. I'm sorry, that's how I feel because, but maybe that's not, that's why I'm not a parent. But yeah, Bear in the Big Blue House, you know, it's meant for kids. I think even nowadays, if you're a parent, you have a kid, this is a show that's well worth a look. And even if, even if you have to sit down with your kid to watch it, at least you won't be that annoyed. At least you can maybe appreciate some of Jim Henson's work. At least his group's work, because by this point Jim Henson himself had passed away, but his group's work. Yeah, don't expect the Dark Crystal or anything. I'm not talking about tone wise, I'm talking about uh, you know, effects wise, but and then it meant well. It means well, has a good heart to it, and you know, it is what it is, so sorry Jack hopefully that was good enough I didn't really know what he wanted for review but yeah 
With that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.